I'm Kathy Zip with Craft Brewing Business. Welcome to our first episode of CBB on the Scene. In many areas, it seems like when one craft brewery pops up, many others follow. So this series will take a closer look at multiple breweries in one region to kind of tell the story of its craft brewing scene. And we're starting with Cleveland, Ohio. So I'm here at the Fatheads Beer Hall in the Barrel Room, and I'm speaking with Bill Wetmore, Director of Sales and Marketing for Fatheads Brewery. So thanks for being here today, Bill. For sure, thank you. And let's start with the important stuff. What are we drinking today? Well, today is a very special day because we don't usually do a Hop Juju release in the fall. Usually we do February, it's one time a year, but this year, um, kind of as a thank you for uh, everyone's patience while we moved into our new brewery. We did a special fall edition of Juju and it bottled this morning. Excellent. Well, it's delicious. How, how would you kind of describe, this is an IPA, correct? This is, yeah, it's an Imperial IPA. Okay. So it's, it's a, a little bit stronger than what uh, a standard IPA would be. So it's about 9%. Okay. So it's a good thing we're sitting down. Right. <laughs> um, 100 IBUs, so it's very hoppy. So you're going to pick up a lot of... Uh, tropical fruit flavors, some citrus, some pines. If you like bring in the aroma, you can kind of sense some of those coming through. Absolutely. Uh, so we're launching this today uh, at our beer hall here, five o'clock today, we'll pour it for the first time. And then throughout the next couple of weeks, people will be able to find it in grocery stores and bars. And it's hoppy beers, you wanna drink fresh. So we made a small amount, we're putting it out there, encourage everybody to get it uh, fast and quickly. Excellent. Well, I love it, I'm a fan for sure. Um, so, Maybe a good place to start would be if you could give us a, a brief history of um, Fatheads and, and really how it started. It started in Pittsburgh, correct? Even though we're in Cleveland here. Yeah, it's an interesting story, a little different than a lot of other breweries for sure. Fathead started as a restaurant 26 years ago on the south side of Pittsburgh, a very um, progressive craft restaurant. And if you think back 26 years ago, there weren't as many craft offerings as you see today. So when you had 20, 30 draft lines, um, trying to find everything new and interesting things to put on there was a challenge but Glenn and Michelle Benigni who founded Fatheads uh, are very passionate about craft beer and they wanted to to bring that to Pittsburgh so that's how we, had, we got started very successful restaurant and then Matt Cole who is uh, our master brewer and the other side of our ownership group uh, had gone to Pitt uh, went to school drank at Fatheads Pittsburgh uh, started his brewing career worked very successfully in the greater Cleveland area and decided to go out on his own. He wanted to start a, uh, a brew pub and uh, was looking for somebody that would be interested in partnering on that. Remembered, I've got these great craft beer loving fans back in uh, Pittsburgh. I wonder if they'd like to get involved. And that's how Fatheads came to Ohio. Matt opened the uh, fat, first Fatheads brew pub in North Olmsted, uh, 2008, 2009. And it was very successful right out of the gate. People wanted to get the beer at grocery stores, in more of the bars in the area. And so after a few short years, Matt and Glenn said, let's make a production brewery. Let's start bringing this beer to the masses. Uh, and that's how we ended up in Middleburg Heights, uh, down the street from this location here. So we were there in 2012 and we thought, okay, we've got enough space here to last us about 10 years. Didn't quite make five. And then we ran out of room, which is a a testament to the beer and to the fans in the in the state of Ohio and Pennsylvania who we've been selling our beer to. And that's why they uh, worked with the county and the city to find a place for a new Fatheads, which we're sitting in today. And this uh, site here is probably uh, 60,000 barrel capacity on it's day a, one. It's a very large it's call. It's <laughs> 75,000 square feet. Uh, we finished last year at around 30,000, 28,000 barrels of beer. Uh, which is a great uh, success story and today we can we can do up to 60,000 right here uh, but that's not our you know that's not our plan for next year we want a nice slow steady growth o over the next several years keep the beer at a really high quality keep making new and interesting things excellent that's really interesting i was i was interested to know you know how how it came from pittsburgh to here so matt was a big part of that mm -hmm. um so how would you describe the fatheads brand um Fun. I think if you look, one of the things that uh, Glenn started with 
you know, the branding that they brought to, Mich uh, to Pittsburgh. And then when we created the individual beers, we always have a little fun with this character. And there's a great story that a friend of Glenn's just drew the first fathead guy on a, on a cocktail napkin and sold it to Glenn for like $50. So um, it wasn't like a big strategic agency commissioning design us this brand new. It was, it was someone local. It was nice because it was organic. And ever since then, we've used that as inspiration for the, for the image of, of Fatheads. But as far as um, the beers themselves, we're very focused on quality. We're very focused on uh, a diversity of styles. We love making German beers. Matt, Matt's very passionate. He goes to Germany uh, every year. He's over in Germany, uh, working with people over there, learning more about uh, how he can bring those, you know, decades and centuries and millenniums of brewing expertise to America and then Belgian styles and we're known for our hoppy beers. Our hoppy beers have won great awards. So I think for us it's consistency, quality, balance, um, playfulness, a little bit of fun spirit. I like that kind of a work hard, play hard exactly, mentality. Yes. So you kind of mentioned some of the different locations around Northeast Ohio. Um, so Fatheads has multiple locations, but they're all in suburban areas, which I think is interesting. Um, they're not downtown, um, except maybe in, in Pittsburgh. Is, is that, Pittsburgh's, yeah, it's, is that uh, a suburban it, area? It's considered downtown Pittsburgh, but I guess it's okay. in the south side of the river, so it's not right in the kind of financial district. Area. I just I think that's interesting because right now there's a lot of breweries opening and they all a lot of them want to be downtown. So why have has Fathead um, decided to keep things in the suburbs? I think part of it is uh, intentional and part of it is happenstance. Uh, I know, you know, Matt worked for many years at Rocky River Brewing Company, which is west side of Cleveland. So he was working at a brewery that was, was suburban and had great success there. And North Olmsted is, is kind of not too far from there. That's where our original brew pub is. But I think it's worked out really well as we've continued to open locations. We have the one in Canton, which opened in March, and the beer hall here. I think that we've, we've always wanted to be like a place where people could appreciate great craft beer, but it would brought people together as a community and it was very family centric. So if you come to our locations, you'll see there's a lot of communal seating, like beer hall type tables. We used to have a lot of picnic tables at the old place. So people would sit, maybe you're sitting with two groups of people that you don't know. And, and uh, I think that comes from that German tradition of beer brings people together, the Oktoberfest, the beer halls, sitting down, sharing a drink, uh, com community. So and that seems to reverberate, I think, in the, in the, in the suburban areas. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so again, talking about all the different locations, you, you have... Um, two locations which are kind of like brew pubs and then you have the the beer hall location which is you know larger with with big tables from even a, a brewing perspective do each of the locations serve a unique purpose for the company i know you kind of touched on a big part of the beer hall is you wanted to increase your capacity with the brewing capacity yeah it's it's really interesting so the brew pubs a lot of times will make will kind of go their own visionary direction as far as what beers within the Fatheads family they choose to make. And that's very responsive to the drinkers that come into those locations. Uh, it, Canton's been open since March and it's, you know, I'm hearing that Bumbleberry does, is like a really big performer down there in Canton. And maybe North Olmsted is, is really doing a lot more hoppy beers um, uh, and attracting more of those consumers. I think there's a little bit of mix across all the places, but our brewers that lead at each location are definitely watching and, and getting to understand the consumers that come in there and what they like and what resonates with them. So we've been doing a little bit more German down in Canton and a little bit more with the fruit stuff. And, you know, I know for a fact when you go into North Olmsted, there's, if there's any, there's at least three or four hoppy beers on at all times. So we do like to share the beers around as well. We've got uh, 32 taps here at this location. We can't make all those beers here. So North Olmsted and Canton will send us some of the stuff they make and we'll send some of the stuff. And it, it really allows us to bring more diversity to all the operations because we can share beer between the, between the three of them. That's interesting. You, you have some really cool insight into not even just Clevelanders as, as a whole, but like really in specific suburbs and areas of, of how each of those um, 
regions really have different tastes when it comes to beer. It's it's really more micro specific. regions. Yeah, yes. it's it's, and I think that's just developed over time. As you know, uh, North Olmsted's been there for ten years now, so uh, there's a lot of loyalty. We really appreciate the fact that there is a, you know, your loyal fans, your consistent uh, people that come in and. And so you get to know them over time and what they like and what they don't like. And you see it on specials menus for food as well. I mean, that type of what, what, what are people ordering? So. Absolutely. So let's talk about your distribution, distribution strategy a little bit. Um, what states or regions are you currently distributing to and what kind of drives your strategy when you're looking at the different regions? Is, is competition a factor? Um, and then with the, the new Fatheads locations, does that affect your, or is that in line, or, or was that driven by your distribution strategy? They, they don't work hand in hand per se, um, but we certainly benefit when we have a location. So I think having Canton open up certainly raises the profile and raises the awareness for Fatheads in general in that area. And we've seen grocery stores and bars in the Akron Canton area uh, pick up uh, for our sales as a result of that. But as far as uh, where we are today, we're in the state of Ohio, state of Indiana, about 90% of Pennsylvania, and we just opened up Buffalo and Rochester, New York uh, last month. So moving into the new breweries increased our capacity, increased our uh, inventory levels, and allowed us to open up new markets where in, in the old place, we were just trying to keep up with the demand in our existing uh, partnerships. We do look at, at competition uh, when we're looking at where we go next. Uh, we're looking at trends, you know, are the beers and the styles that we're going to be emphasizing performing well in a particular area? Is there, is there a, a big, strong local brewing community that maybe makes it a very insular market? Or is it a more open-minded community? Are they open to regional brands and national brands? And it's, it's funny, we talk about those micro regions. Kind of every different major city has a, a different uh, way that they approach craft beer. And Columbus is a great example. There's a lot of really strong Columbus-based breweries, and it's, it's tighter to crack in there. But say you go to a, maybe a Buffalo or Rochester, and they're more open-minded to um, brands that are not uber local. So that's, that's probably the biggest factor right now in how we approach it. Right getting to know those different markets and, and which ones are receptive and will you know, try something new or, sure. or maybe won't. Um, so you were talking about food and, and Fatheads isn't just about the great beer, it's about great food. Um, you have a full menu, your locations definitely have a, a restaurant atmosphere that's welcoming to families um, and communities, as you said, with the picnic tables, long tables. Um, I'm honestly bummed when I do go to a brewery and they don't have food because I feel like I've been spoiled by brands like Fatheads. So do you see uh, breweries offering food as a, a marketing, like how, how do you see the decision to serve food in a brewery as a, a marketing or business uh, move? And why did Fatheads make that choice? Yeah, there, there used to be like a mantra that you can either do food really well or you can do beer really well as a restaurant. And very few people unlock the key to doing them both. And I think that that's something that's changed a lot over the last 10 or 15 years. And you see just the whole culinary world has changed a lot in the last 10 or 15 years. There's like 11 food channels on at all times. And there's all these... Uh, different boutique restaurants that pop up and farm to table. And so food has become something that people are more um, thoughtful about, just like they are with beer. You know, there used to be a much smaller offering of beers. People didn't differentiate a lot between, you know, one or the other. And, and now there's a lot of nuance to beer. And I think people are being more thoughtful about beer. They're being more thoughtful about food. And we've, you don't have to have a, a big menu to be successful as a, as a brew pub or a, a brewery that serves food, but it's a it's been a passion of ours for a long time. Um, Matt does uh, barbecue smoking competitions. Uh, that's his uh, happy place and his uh, escape place from the brewery, and uh, excelled at it. And we've taken that and brought that into the way we approach beer. So you'll see a lot of smoked meats on our menus. You'll see a lot. We're kind of we've won awards for our uh, our smoked wings and. 
take as much pride in that as, as we do in the beer. And when you're talking about bringing families together in community, uh, I think it's a, it's a, a critical part of the recipe for success. Absolutely. It feels welcoming, you know, even, even if you're, you know, you have kids, you know, obviously, you know, they're not here for the beer, they're here for the food, but it's like a welcoming environment that you can, all families can feel they can, you know, go Everybody and have dinner. Everybody loves chicken wings at all ages. Right. Yes. <laughs> That's true. Uh, so Fatheads is also an interesting spot from a, a sales and marketing perspective. There's a lot of craft breweries in the Cleveland area now. And uh, they're all trying to make their name and grow and essentially kind of do what Fatheads has, has done. But Fatheads has been around for a while and, you know, the region knows it. And so from, what are some of the sales and marketing challenges for a brewery um, in Fatheads position in the local market? Are, are there disadvantages to having been around for a while? Um, you know, when people are checking out maybe new places or is the sales and marketing focus really more on expanding and, and opening new markets. How do you kind of see yourself in that scope of the craft brewing scene? We, we still see a, a tremendous amount of potential for Fatheads to grow and be bigger in Northeast Ohio, in the state of Ohio. Uh, but your, your point is very valid. There's, there's a lot more breweries and brew pubs uh, competing for attention and share mind uh, than there were two years ago, five years ago, ten years ago. It seems like there's somebody new every every month that's opening up, and you know part of that is is some of them have been have come through Fatheads. There's several people that were brewers here at Fatheads that have gone on to be lead brewers at other places or partners in other places. So it does create a challenge. There's only a finite number of tap handles in a bar. So when you go in there and and it's a eight tap handle bar. Or a, 50 tap handle bar, everybody's competing to get their spot and their their turn on the on the spigot. And hopefully the mentality is, is what sells well and uh, what's consistent, what delivers quality. That's the message we try to deliver to retailers is, you know, we're a proven uh, successful commodity. And if you if you put it on there, it, this beer won't let you down. And when the same thing applies to grocery stores, you see grocery stores, beverage stores, it's an overwhelming shopping experience. You see a wall of beer choices out there. So it's certainly important to, to have a strong track record and make your name. And in, in Northeast Ohio, having the restaurants helps keep us top of mind. But it's, it's, not, as, uh, it's not as easy as it used to be. It, I think it only gets harder every day as more and more people are fighting for less and less space. Right. So you really, you really see some challenges occurring with more breweries in the Cleveland area rather than advantages well there's there's certainly there's certainly an advantage in getting more people drinking craft beer you know we still have less than 15 percent of the total beer business in craft so there's a a lot of runway for everybody to go out and um, gain more you know maybe domestic drinkers or import drinkers or light drinkers uh, we've continued to introduce people to craft beer so in that regard the more places that are getting people to try Imperial IPAs and, and German beers and Belgian beers and more stronger, more complex, more character beers. That's good for all of us. There's, there's still a lot of room for all of us to grow together. But um, I think it's, it's, it's more of like a, when you start to get specific, when you start to say how many spots are in this grocery store shelf, how many tap handles are in here, and everybody's trying to fight for that, I think that's when it becomes... Uh, important that you have a really strong business plan. You've got really uh, engaged and, and successful salespeople that can go out and execute your strategy. So what's next for Fatheads? Um, well, we've only been in here since July and the restaurant's only been open since the end of August. So I think uh, there's still a lot of getting this place established and um, the restaurant's doing tremendously well. The beer that's coming out of the brewery is absolutely fantastic as we continue to bring uh, more and more of our, our beers into the new brewery and start brewing them on the system for the first time. They're coming out great. So I think we want to get this place really locked in for a year or so. We're going to open up a couple new markets. Um, we are going to introduce a couple new beers next year. We're not telling secrets yet, but there will be some new beers from Fat Ed's in 2019. There'll be some new uh, packaging formats and things like that. So I think 
the new brewery is going to empower us to do uh, more and different and better and variety in a way that we, we just outgrew at the old place. So I would say stay tuned in the next six to eight months. Uh, there, there will be some different things on the horizon. So thank you so much again, Bill. Really appreciate speaking with us. Um, you can watch more of our series, CBB on the scene at craftbrewingbusiness.com. And thanks so much again, Bill. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers.